Israel, the country of origin of biblical stories featuring many fathers of our faith. These patriarchs, Abraham, Moses, Joseph, Daniel, and King David experienced many miracles in their walk with God. This is one of the reasons so many people from all over the world journey to Israel because they long to see or perhaps even experience a miracle themselves. Through the New Testament, we see an abundance of miracles being performed through the power of Jesus Christ, the world's most renowned miracle worker. On today's program, Gottfried Bueller shares a very personal miracle story from his family. The Bueller families are believers in Jesus Christ and have very close ties to Israel and the Jewish people. I grew up in a family where we had first-hand experience with miracles. This is my brother Jürgen with his daughter. This is me. Together we went to see the old city of Jerusalem. Here we are at the observation platform of the Herva Synagogue. My brother Jürgen is a director of the ICEJ in Jerusalem. He has lived with his family in Israel for many years. Here, in what I call the land of miracles, Jürgen and our family have been put to a difficult test, where many friends and people from all around the world have prayed for exactly that, a big miracle. Jürgen is preaching about healing. His message centers on encouraging people to believe in miracles through Jesus. At this point, however, only a few were aware that he himself was once in desperate need for such a miracle. Well, to be very honest, I, I always believe that God is a God of miracles. I, I'm the son of a pastor, a Pentecostal pastor, and uh, my father was alive because he experienced two major miracles in his life. He was almost dying in Russia in a prison camp. And then secondly, he was uh, caught in a very horrible accident when he was a construction worker. Uh, he was falling down from a 10 meter uh, construction uh, uh, scaffold and the doctor has given up on him. And they said, well, uh, um, you might survive, but we have to amputate both of your legs. They said, your legs, they are, that's what they said, they are like bone salad, irreparable. And he says, no, you're not amputating my legs because I have a calling on my life. I need to preach the gospel and I need my legs for that. And the doctor said, you have to sign here because it can kill you. And um, after two days, after people were praying with him, the doctor said, I've never seen something like that, but your bones are realigning themselves. I give you another few days. So to cut the story short, he left the hospital uh, with two intact legs. The doctor told him when he was leaving the hospital, he said, I promise you, you will always feel your knees and your hips because they were completely destroyed. And maybe a year before he died, he says, Jürgen, in my whole life I had a lot of pains. I had head pains and I had back pains, but I never had any pains in my legs. So I knew God is a God who is doing miracles. For over five years, Jürgen Bühler has successfully led the International Christian Embassy Jerusalem. He is well known by all kinds of people who love and work for Israel. Even high-ranking politicians appreciate his ministry. He is married to Vesna, and together they have four children. It came after a very busy season. I was um, just coming out of the Feast of Tabernacles last year, which was a very active time, of course. Immediately after that, I was leaving to Finland on a speaking tour. I came back to Germany, we attended the Bar Mitzvah of a friend, I remember that, and then I, at that celebration I realized something is not right and my wife told me, why don't you go for a checkup to hospital? So that night I went to hospital and uh, I thought I would be out the next day, I thought maybe you have kidney stones or bladder stones or something like that. And, um, the next, doctor, the next day, the doctor, after some tests, the doctor called my wife and me into his office and I realized it's something serious. The doctors told him he has kidney cancer. The word cancer is a very powerful word. Yeah. 
I heard about and I knew cancer patients, but until it hits yourself, uh, you don't know how powerful it is. When the doctor told me, says Jürgen, you have kidney cancer, it was somebody like stabbing a knife uh, in, 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 into your heart. And it's really, it's painful and you know this is something very dangerous and life-threatening. And then in particular the uh, diagnosis in my life was that the doctor told me there is a 50% chance of surviving that operation. And I realized later on he actually didn't believe there was any chance for me to survive that. And then secondly, he says, even if you survive the operation for them to get everything out, because it's growing everywhere, it's very improbable. So I knew in a way it was almost like a death sentence. In that time, there were two things which came really powerfully uh, into my life. One was an understanding of the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it really was like receiving a death sentence where the doctor told me, you are going to die, not directly, but indirectly. During that time, I never had even for one second fear of death. And I never was afraid to die because I can't describe you now how real it was. But I knew that I knew that I knew if I would die, I know where I'm going to. And the very first day even when I was receiving that diagnosis and I, re I realized this could mean that I will not be alive anymore very long, I almost saw like Jesus welcoming me and I, I knew that my soul would be eternally with him. And to be very honest, the only reason why I prayed very desperately for God to heal me was not so much about me and the fear of death, but I have a family, I have four children, and I knew my, my children, they need a father, my wife, she needs her husband. And I was praying and pleading for the Lord who says, please keep me for the sake of my family, because I understood they might probably be more devastated by the diagnosis than I was. And uh, the, like I said, the first thing what I realized was the power of the gospel, that it really can take the sting of death away from your life. But at the same time, I also understood and appreciated more than ever the importance of family. I suddenly realized what I had in my wife, what God gave me with my children, and in a way it reordered the whole priority list in my whole life. I never question God, uh, why does he allow that? Because I do believe that God is a, a loving and a merciful God. But at the same time, uh, you know, working in the kingdom of God and dealing with something which is maybe even at the forefront of a spiritual battle here in Jerusalem, dealing with Muslims, with Jews, with, with things which have to do with, in a way, with world redemption. I do understand that my life was and is uh, it's a battleground and it's a battle uh, which is going on. And uh, the fact that the doctor told repeatedly and spoke repeatedly, says there is this snake in your body. And for me, in a way, this was like a revelation that this is a spiritual battle and there is a way out. decided to tackle that issue with prayer. We invited people, friends, ICJ staff, pastors from the, the, the country to join us in prayer. During those prayer times, incredible things happened, but there were aspects that challenged Jürgen even more. And uh, the amazing thing was those prayer meetings, they were yeah, characterized by an incredible presence of Jesus. It was really extraordinary. The amazing thing also was that people who came to the prayer meeting who were sick, they got healed and they received a healing touch from the Lord, but nothing happened <laughs> to me. And, uh, and in a way, the, the paradox of that time was on the one side, we felt 
in an incredible way that Jesus was there and that Jesus was in our room. Even people visiting us and coming to us, they say there is something in your living room. There is this unique atmosphere of peace. What is it? And we say, well, it's the Lord who is with us. But even though I experienced this presence of the Lord and had the deep conviction that he is with us, he still was in a way very distant. I always felt him, he's here, and I, I, I still remember many times I told my wife, I know Jesus is here, but and he's, he was before me like you are sitting before me. But uh, all the time he remained silent. He was looking at me and he was almost staring at me and uh, never talked to me. But I, sometimes I cried a little, why don't you talk to me? I know you are here, why don't you give, you me, a, give me a word about you will be healed? But it was very interesting to, and, and challenging at the same time to, to go through that. Well, prayer and worship, um, I think those two things are very crucial elements. I believe also, you know, uh, to call the elders uh, of the congregation. That's what the Bible says. If somebody is sick among you, call the elders. They should anoint you with oil. It also speaks about confessing your sins. You know what we did before we left to Germany? Uh, I called our pastor from our Jerusalem congregation to us and I said, I'm not sure if I come back alive, but I want to uh, have a time of confession. And my wife and I, we were sitting with him and we made tabula rasa. It wasn't big, huge, dramatic sins, but I knew there were some issues which I had to confess. And uh, also the, the Word of God is a very powerful tool. What I did during that time, I was feeding myself daily with the Word of God, with the promises of God, what He speaks about disease, what He says about healing. Um, you know, there are very powerful promises, uh, uh, what God says if people are being sick. In the autumn of 2015, Jürgen was admitted to a hospital in Dresden, Germany for a very difficult operation. The doctors, they called my wife in and they said this was a very uh, complicated operation. I had the privilege to have one of the top surgeons in Germany. He was an expert in this type of operations. And um, one of the doctors called my wife after the operation, which went more than eight hours at the end. And they said, uh, your husband, we had big complications with him. He lost a tremendous amount of blood. Uh, they had to give me 25 units of blood during the operation. And uh, one of my organs was cracking and added to the complications. So then when, when they had to put me into an induced coma, for they said this can go for days. But something happened in that first night where they called my wife, please come, it seems your husband is waking up and he starts to breathe again from his own. And uh, my organs were still not working perfectly, but within 24 hours, the doctor said, we see they, they start setting in again. When I was waking up after a very complicated operation and I was, uh, sitting in the intensive care unit and I knew that I knew Jesus was sitting outside and he was watching us. And I was laying there with incredible pains and I said, Jesus, why don't you come in? I know just one touch of you can sort it all out. I felt for me this was maybe the main lesson. I got a, a little glimpse uh, how Jesus must have felt at the cross. I was surrounded by a team of doctors. They had one task, and that was to take away as much as possible any pain in my life and to make sure I'm surviving. Jesus was surrounded by a team of experts. They had one purpose, to increase the pain to the maximum and to make sure that he uh, is tortured to the maximum. You know, this was professional torturers, they knew how to put the nails through his hand in a way that he will not bleed to death, but that he will survive for as long as possible and suffocate literally to death. Some of them, they were laying there and hanging there for days because they knew how to do their business. So I was surrounded by a team which was there, just there to bless me and this was the opposite. And I didn't have the strength to talk to my bad neighbor and to even communicate with my wife. And Jesus talked to his disciples, please take care of my mom. She, 
Shinizio and Shinizio Hall. And I'm sorry. In a way, I understood, you know, what Paul speaks about in the book of Philippians, where he says, speaks about the fellowship of his sufferings. And I never understood what that mean, but in a way I understood that God gave me the privilege to just scratch the surface what Jesus was going. I will never, nobody will ever imagine the pains what he was going through. But it really was a, le a lesson for me how much Jesus paid and how much he loved us for dying for you and for my sin and that, the incredible sacrifice what he brought for humanity. But suddenly, something miraculous happened that amazed the medical staff. Within eight days, I could leave the hospital and after two weeks, I was flying back to Israel. And um, this is a huge miracle. Today, I do feel stronger than probably in many years. Um, I was just going again through the Feast of Tabernacles. I told my wife, this is amazing. I feel stronger after the feast than I don't feel, that I never felt in many years after the Feast of Tabernacles. At the Feast of Tabernacles, hosted annually by the ICEJ in Jerusalem, Jürgen put his testimony into action, encouraging and praying for those who are sick. Healing in the blood of Jesus. Healing in the name of Jesus. When I came back to Israel, I had a meeting with the, uh, one of the head doctors of Sha'ar Tzedek Hospital. Um, he was the chief doctor of the whole department. He didn't see me before, it was another doctor who diagnosed me. So I was seeing him because the other doctor had, didn't have time to see me. So he looked at my file and he says, Jürgen Bühler, Jürgen Bühler, I remember you have been here before, you have been here in November, I remember your name, we were discussing your case in our doctor's meeting. And then he looked at me and he says, and you are alive. And I realized they didn't have hope for me to come back alive. And he said at least five times during that meeting, he says, well, I don't know what this doctor did, I don't know how he did it, but that you survived, that's a miracle. And I realized it was, even the operation was a miracle where God really, intervened and gave wisdom to the doctors when they were working on my body. Before we left to Germany for the operation, a lady of our church, uh, as they were praying for us as a family, she says, you know, I just felt I had something like a vision when we were praying for you. I saw you on the operating table in Germany and I saw all the doctors working in your body and then I saw Jesus coming and putting his hand in your belly and he was operating you. And in a way, this was what was, was taking place. It was really, uh, uh, the doctor said it was a miraculous operation. And I believe God used the incredible skills from doctors. This was the best doctor I could have gotten in Germany. And I'm extremely thankful that he was willing to do that operation. But at the same time, I know also Jesus was in that room and he restored me. My wife and I, we said, you, we want to put the Lord as our family doctor. That doesn't mean that we go to other doctors, that doesn't mean we don't, go, we don't go to hospital, but it means that when there is something happening and with our children, with my wife or with me, the first thing what we do, we pray to God and we ask the Lord for a, a touch of, of his uh, healing power and we ask him also for wisdom what to do. And, in a way, the Lord, as my family doctor, he answered my prayer and he gave me a letter of referral to a doctor to Germany. He said, I want you to go to this expert, he will deal with you. But the Bible encourages us to go first to him and to seek him first. And I believe there are many people here today, they will experience that God is a prayer answering God. Uh, I spoke about that recently in Germany and a lady came to me and she said, well, you are praying for the sick people and you are encouraging them uh, about uh, to trust the God, the Lord for healing. What about all those people which there is no answered prayer? And I told her, he says, the Bible doesn't speak very much about that. 
And of course, God is a God of comfort and he will, I felt the comfort of God in a situation where I didn't know what will be my future, but at the same time, the Bible encourages us, the Word of God encourages us to put our trust in Him and to believe that, like it says in Isaiah, that in His tribes we are healed. Like it says in the book of Exodus, in the second book of Moses, uh, chapter 15, it says, well, it says, I am your healer. The prophet of Isaiah, chapter 53, is he declares to us that physical healing is part of the salvation work of Jesus at the cross. He says, he was wounded for our transgressions and he was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement for our peace was upon him and in his stripes we are healed. We are healed. In Exodus chapter 15, verse 26, Moses is telling the people of Israel, he says, I will put none of the diseases upon you which I have brought on Egypt, because I am the Lord who heals you. Now the Hebrew text says it the following way, it says, because Yahweh Rophe, or it can be also translated, because I am the Lord your physician. One of the privileges, of course, what we had is that people from the Fiji Islands all across the globe that were praying for us. And we felt those prayers in an incredible way. And I want to thank even those people who are watching now and who are who were praying for us as a family. Uh, your prayers have been answered and it really were the, your prayers which gave us strength and which carried us through in this incredible moment. And everybody who is sick today and is watching today, that's what I want to tell you, is that with God there are no incurable diseases. There is nothing which is impossible to God to do. There is no disease which is too difficult for you. I was given up by the doctors. They didn't have much hope for me. He restored me and he can also restore your life. Father, in the name of Jesus, we declare your healing power. From a situation of severe sickness, Jürgen has come out strengthened and completely healed. More than ever, today he is engaged in ministry at the International Christian Embassy Jerusalem. Fra 20. til 28. september har vi gleden av å invitere dig mellom 15 og 28 år med på en reise til Israel. Disse dagene er det løvhyttefest, og du kommer til å få en uforglemmelig opplevelse. Turen begynner i nydelige Netanya ved Middelhavn. Her blir det bading og deilig strandliv, men også spennende undervisning om Israel med Eva og Dag Øyvind. Vi skal til Galilea og kjøre båt på selveste Genesaretsjøen før turen går videre til Dødehavn. Her joiner vi flere tusen kristne på Ørkenfesten. I Jerusalem besøker vi kjente steder og blir med på den kristne ambassades celebration under Løvhyttefesten. Dette blir en spennende opplevelse for livet.